Universal credit has not and may never deliver value for money. That's the damning assessment of the new benefit system from the government spending watchdog. The National Audit Office says the scheme's rollout has been too slow and it may never know if it achieves the goal of increasing employment. But the Department of Work and Pension still insists the scheme will bring a £34 billion return over a decade, as James Matthews reports. If there's a measure of universal credit impact, the Seardry Food Bank might be it. It's operated through the change in the benefit system. Numbers needing help here have doubled. The amount that they're receiving universal credit is, is very low and uh, they have to heat their house, they've got other bills to pay, gas, electricity and unfortunately when it comes to buying food uh, they're left with very little. The food bank finding here is echoed in a damning report by the National Audit Office. And there's more. The spending watchdog says universal credit hasn't delivered value for money and that it might never. The report found the rollout of universal credit had been due by October last year, but as of today, it's only being claimed by 10% of those entitled. Between January and October last year, of late payments, 40% were delayed by 11 weeks, 20% were almost five months late. In the same period, one claimant in five didn't receive full payment in time. One in 10 received no payment at all. And we spoke to lots of national and local organisations that are working with the claimants and um, they showed us enough evidence to, to really demonstrate that, that some, a significant minority, are struggling. These claimants are struggling to make their claim online. They're struggling to um, cope until they get their first payment and they're struggling with the fluctuating income that Universal Credit provides. Pauline Boyd claims Universal Credit. The report found that for people in her position, the Department of Work and Pensions hadn't assessed the hardship they suffer. They don't pay enough money to live on. There is no way. You know, I'm running a home on £317 a month. It is a complete struggle. Despite its criticisms, the National Audit Office concludes that Universal Credit is here to stay. Returning to the previous benefits regime, it says, would be so complex and costly that there's no practical alternative but to continue on. We uh, don't agree with some of the conclusions that the NO has uh, uh, come up with. We also have to look at the context of the legacy benefit system. It's incredibly complicated. We've rolled six benefits into one. We've made sure that instead of three agencies delivering benefits, it's one. And I can tell you from talking to claimants as I go around the country visiting job centres, they think that the system is much simpler and easier and actually the disincentives of not taking on work have gone which means that what we are now seeing with universal credit and we've put out analysis on this is that people are able to increase their levels of employment and their employment prospects others beg to differ in its withering critique the national audit office says universal credit could end up costing more than the system it replaces and the government will never be able to measure its stated goal of increasing employment. James Matthews, Sky News, Airdrie. Torsten Bell is the director of Resolution Foundation, which aims to improve the standard of living, the standard of living of low and middle income families. Torsten, thanks for joining us. Universal Credit, a pretty damning report from the NAO this morning. Fair to say it's not fit for purpose? Well, I mean, the main thing to take away from this is that universal credit is just a big deal. This is a big deal affecting, at the moment, only about 800,000 families, but rolling out to 8 million families. Most of working families with kids at some stage will be on universal credit in the 2020s. So this is a big deal, and we've got to get it right as a country. And yes, the NEO report today is probably, in some ways, bad news for people in the department, because it does say both that there's problems with the rollout, how the, how the actual policy change has been delivered in practice and that's led to hardship for some people but there are also challenges with the actual policy underpinning that and those things on both fronts need to be put right we need the right rollout but we also need to make sure we get the policy that is being rolled out correct just 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 on before we get on to kind of the hardship element on the finances of it there was an expectation uh, that it would deliver an annual benefit of eight billion pounds a year that was the government sell of folding yeah. all these benefits into universal credit the uh, National Audit Office says that remains unproven. Is this a waste of taxpayers' money? 
Um, well, one of the other things the NEO says is we'll probably never know the answer to that question, so which, is, which is a hard thing to ad admit, but we probably won't know. And that's because, obviously, once we've moved to universal credit, we won't know what the old system will have cost. But look, are there some warning signs? Yes, it's costing us a lot more to process universal credit uh, cases at the moment, over £600, than we're looking for it to cost under £200 uh, by the time it's fully rolled out. Now, that's partly because these are harder cases, unemployed mm. people at the moment, and later there'll be more people that can do it online. Um, but it's also because there's reductions in the benefits in terms of how many people um, the government expects to be more people to be in work because of the move to universal credit. They used to say it'd be 300,000. Mm. They're now saying it'll be nearer 200,000, and only half of that delivered by the improved financial incentives the system's meant to bring. I mean, the whole policy was designed, obviously, to get more people back into work. work and to make welfare work. That was the great strap line of the idea of it all. Uh, the NAO also had evidence in the report that many people are suffering difficulties and hardships during the rollout. And of course, yeah. we've seen dozens and dozens of such stories. Um, are you concerned about that? And do you think it's really exacerbating difficulties for people in poverty? Well, I, mean, I think there's, there's a number of fronts to that. So on the on the question of are people suffering hardship, clearly you can see cases of that. You can see it in the data, but you can also see it in the real world if you spend time in job centres or uh, at food banks or other things. People are clearly raising that. It's clearly, and the specific pinch points have, have been around when people get their first payment. Mm -hmm. and the government has made some changes, but you can see in the data um, in the NAO report, one in five people still not getting paid in full or on time for mm -hmm. their first payment. That's clearly a big deal. And that would, if you're, you know, when you need that first payment, that's clearly really important. And there are things that could be done to speed that up, particularly around how we deal with housing in the system. And housing is actually one of the other issues where, because of a move from housing benefit being moved into this system, we have seen an uptick in arrears in some yeah. sectors. Now, again, the government is trying to deal with that. They're working with social housing providers and some private landlords to try and make that system uh, easier and less people having to go into arrears. But there is some pressure in that system. Mm -hmm. And that's where you're seeing these, what are both a mixture of rollout challenges. Can they get the information they need from universal credit claimants quick enough? But also policy challenges, the way in which the actual system works. I mean, Last year, there was a Tory rebellion over this, and they did get changes in the budget, and they did yeah. get tweaks to it, as you talked about, slightly yeah. reducing the wait time, et cetera, et cetera. If you could kind of pull out one or two big changes that you think would alleviate the hardship people suffer, what would it be? Well, the big thing we need to do is, because as, you, as your report said, the NEO says that whatever you think about universal credit, it's hard, almost impossible to go back now. That's their view. Yeah. That is actually why DBP won't be as upset about this report as the front page of the papers this morning would lead you to believe. Because in the end, if it's unstoppable, they'll think, well, anyone's going ahead with this, and then it's just about getting it right. So in terms of getting it right, we should be thinking really carefully. This policy was designed for an era where people said the problem was worklessness, families mm -hmm. with nobody in them working. That is not the problem in 21st century Britain. We have record employment levels, and instead what we need is people able to earn more progress and to do more hours. And to achieve that, we should reformat universal credit so it gives stronger incentives for second earners, largely women but not all, and for single parents to be in work and to be rewarded for doing so. And the danger with the system is it was designed for an era that we're no longer in. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Torsten, for coming in to talk to us.